thank you so much for being here, particularly on a Friday afternoon uh, when you could be headed home to be with your families. It's such an honor to me that you would be here with me for this celebration. Um, I thank you for that. Thanks, James, also for agreeing to MC this. You know, James is one of many civilians that represents this great agency that provides the support and then in many parts, while those of us in uniform get the praise and, and the, uh, the accolades, the civilians do a great job to help keep this organization going, so we're thankful to you. Um, I, I didn't know it throughout my entire career, but God destined me to be a general. In fact, it wasn't until I became one that I realized that, but when I started preparing for what I was gonna say here and started looking at all the things and the blessings in my life, I realized how could I not have become one? Because I've got a great family. I was born in a traditional, functional American family. I've got a wonderful mother and father who loved us, who raised us to work hard, to value things that are important, and to value family. Um, Mom and Dad, I love you. Um, and I'm so glad you could be here with me because this is as much about you as it is about me. Um, I've got great kids, as you, as you heard for yourself. I mean, I, I, I was ready to just end the ceremony at that because how do you follow that? I've got wonderful children. I've got a daughter who joined the Air Guard and has just excelled in every regard. My daughter, Rachel, is probably the most disciplined and determined person I've ever met. And my son, John, um, has more talent in his little finger than I'd ever have in my life. And when he figures out what it is he's going to do, watch out because you're going to read about that kid. And of course, I, I, my wife, General Ashner said it all, honey, you know, my wife gave up a lot to be a mom and a, and a wife, um, to include a military career of her own. She was a captain in the guard herself, and she hung it all up so that she could focus more on taking care of us. And, and I'm standing here today because of the sacrifices you made, and I love you. And I just hope that you accept these flowers as just a symbol of my recognition of how much you've done for me and for our family so that I could be standing here today, and I love you. You know, I've been fortunate to cross paths with some great people all throughout my career. Um, and specifically, I've had a chance to watch great generals because there's this intangible thing that's called generalship that nobody can describe to you, but you know when a great general's got it. And I've been fortunate enough to just watch good people like, with last names like Wade and Cambic, Hartley and Carmony and Lee, Martin, Alexander, and now most recently, Klaus, McHenry, Bartman, Smith. I mean, folks who just understand generalship and what it means to bear the responsibility and the burden of leading hundreds, thousands sometimes, soldiers, sometimes into harm's way. So for all the retired generals and currently serving generals that showed up today, thank you very, very much for being here. Um, I'd also like to just point out one, one very special guest here today. Um, I'm, I'm honored. Director Mo, the Director of Ohio Department of Veteran Services for being here. Uh, Director Mo is a, a Vietnam veteran, F-16 pilot, a great friend, um, tireless advocate for veterans. Most importantly, he's a no-excuse guy. If there's ever a guy who can make excuses for not doing things in life, it'd be him, but he's never done that. You know, anybody who spent five years as a POW in Hanoi would have a lot of reasons to say, I shouldn't or couldn't do that. But no, he wakes up every day to do great work for veterans of this great state. Sir, for that, I'm very appreciative of you. And I'm fortunate enough to have a boss who, who trusts me with this assignment. Because there are a lot, a lot of capable people who could be standing here doing this job as the Adjutant General. Some of those are names that I, I named earlier. But I was blessed enough to be selected with this responsibility, and I'm thankful for that. General Ashenhurst is a, she has worked at a blistering pace for this last year. Ma'am, it's been fantastic watching you work. You're a tireless advocate for soldiers, truly a tireless advocate for airmen, and uh, very highly regarded and respected for everyone, by everyone who serves with and for her because, ma'am, we all know that you care. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. I also, I 
I need to say thanks to the rest of the command team too. Sorry, Major Watmile couldn't be here, but DK Taylor and uh, and Chip Tanzel, Chief of Staff. You know, these guys are the ones who really keep the Army National Guard going. I get the credit for it, but you know, sometimes I feel like I'm in that a, a baby seat, the old style baby seats that used to have the plastic steering wheel. You know, I sit there and hold the steering wheel, and they humor me and let me think that I'm driving. <laughs> So I look out the window and wave, and they let me think that I'm driving the organization. But it's them that really keep the thing going every day and uh, just do a marvelous job. And we get better every day, and that's our commitment that we will continue to, to improve. Also, thanks uh, Candy Jones, AC Laudrier, and Sergeant Ingram, my support team. Unstoppable. AC for pay, making all this happen today. Um, Sergeant Ingram, one of the most selfless people I know. And Candy Jones. Where are you, Candy? I'd be lost without her. And let me tell you something, if you know Candy, you know that it's worth getting up to go to work every day just to see what's gonna happen in the office when Candy is around. <laughs> so thanks for everything, Candy. Now I know that this ceremony is about me and it's about my flag, but I think that every one of us needs to remember that it's the flags over to my right, those six flags that represent our brigades that are what really matter. They represent six brigades, they represent 11,400 people. And we need to remember that's 11,400 souls, that's 11,400 people that count on us every day. Those are 11,400 people that, you know, we're responsible for everything from their spiritual wellness to helping them find their purpose and direction in life. We're responsible for making sure they've got sound relationships and knowing that they've got solid family structure. We're responsible for their physical fitness and their health. And we're responsible, quite frankly, make sure they keep their financial houses in order because that's what readiness means to us. Because they've made the sacrifice and said, we'll stop up any day to do the mission of our nation, even if that means laying down our lives if we have to. If they're the ones who said, if you, my nation, if my state needs me at four in the morning, I'll get up and I'll be the one to go. And for that, we owe them the very best we can deliver. And I understand that that's my charge and I'll come to work with that on my mind every day. So you can understand why I say I was destined to be a general. I've been blessed with so many things that I couldn't possibly fail. Great family, great friends, and all of you. So for that, I'm able to stand here today and say, I'm Brigadier General John Harris, and I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat, I will never quit, and I will never leave a fallen comrade. Thank you very much.